what you guys got another video here for you now are Xeon processors worth it in 2020 that's what I get asked all the time about Xeon processors I know a lot of people do create content on Xeon processors they are a server grade CPU the one we're talking about is the Intel Xeon E5 2689 it's a 2.6 gigahertz 8 core 16 thread processor this is the very first generation of this processor they're up to, I think, version 4 now. You'll see a little V1, V2, V3, and V4 on there, and that will reflect in the price. The very first one is only $56.99. It was a high-end uh, CPU of its time, and it's a pretty decent CPU uh, for the first quarter of 2013. That's how old this CPU is. So is it worthy of buying today and worth buying it for gaming and stuff like that? Well, I'm going to break all that down in this video for you to help you understand whether it's worth buying one of these older generation Xeon processors and all the pitfalls and also some of the pluses of buying something like this. Now, of course, this is a pretty decent chip for the price. It is only $56.99. You can even get them a little bit cheaper. And these are on AliExpress, which are in China. So you can see $56.70 for this one. It's the same uh, E5 2689. And of course, that is not the version one two three or four or any of those other versions that may be available to you there is a version four out there which is quite expensive now if you're in the uk and you're buying them from sites like ebay then you are going to have to pay a pretty premium for the version three version you can see here they want 129 pounds and 88 pence some stats will change you do get bigger cash and also some other uh, things like that when you're buying the latest versions of course but this will reflect in the price as well again another problem you may run into is motherboards motherboards are a premium when it comes to this cpu because no one wants to use a boring old server grade uh, motherboard so if you want to buy one of these old 2011 socket motherboards then you're going to have to pay a quite a big premium in the uk you can see these are the old server think station lenovo ones here look really nasty really sort of a proprietary type of motherboard but if you're looking for something like a say for instance a asus rampage then you're going to have to pay you know 174 pounds and 94 pence for a used motherboard which is astronomically high so this then starts to make the project that you're looking to do a very expensive one because the time you pay for the processor and one of these decent motherboards now you're talking about paying quite a bit of money if you want to use one of those more premium boards but aliexpress are selling motherboards like the x uh, 79 lga 2011 now these are a chinese branded motherboard now of course this isn't made by gigabyte msi or asus this is made by a chinese manufacturer and again that will reflect in the price you can see it is only 69 dollars and 50 cents uh, if you get it from aliexpress that means you will be able to uh, buy ECC memory. You have to run that on this board. And again, you've also got the M.2 SSD slot on there. If you want to put that in, you can do. Whether you'll get the full speeds on that, I really don't know. I mean, you're not going to be overclocking this CPU anyway. It's just basically a cheap board to run the Xeon processors here. So you can see the sort of prices you're looking at already for the board and also uh, for the chip you need to get your ram as well so whether you want to uh, get your ram from aliexpress you can do and uh, they do that as well but you can also pick these boards up on ebay and also on amazon as well these are still coming from china and again i really don't know uh, what the reliability is on these now this does support the e52680 version 2 as well as you can see there it's listed on there so you can get these types of boards for different types of uh, xeon processors just to take do your research and work out how much it's going to all cost when you put it all together i think your best bet if you're going to do it is probably go straight to aliexpress and get everything from there because that's going to be the cheapest way of doing it now you can see here 70 dollars for 32 gigabytes of 866 megahertz memory which should be fine in that board Again, just check the motherboard to make sure it can run those speeds. If not, then drop it down and get the slower speed. 1600 megahertz is there as well. So depending on whether you want 16 gigs or 32 gigs, 
will reflect in the price. We'll just leave it at that $70 for 32 gigabytes for 866, so you can get a ballpark figure of how much it all costs. So what I would advise you to do is probably go for a 16 gigabytes of RAM and try to get the price as cheap as possible because the whole idea of this is to keep this project price as cheap as possible because if it starts to get close to uh, you know a new system then it's not worth doing. So you can see here coolers of the like Intel Xeon coolers are pretty expensive $60. I'm pretty sure that you could do a bit more research and find a 2011 socket cooler and uh, get yourself something probably around about $40 is probably going to be where it's going to be uh, for a decent cooler. I'm pretty sure that's going to be where about it's at. And again, it's all about, uh, you know, price to performance, really keeping that price down because as soon as it starts getting close to a brand new system, it's not worth it because a Ryzen system will beat this Xeon LG uh, 2011 socket processor which is the E5 2690 in this case so you can see you can pick up these particular types of coolers there's new ones and used ones it's entirely up to you what one you go for this one's 48 pounds and it will keep that CPU cool it doesn't look pretty but again you are using old hardware now if you don't want to go down the route of picking and choosing your separate parts you can buy a bundle just like this one and you can see $185.88 since will get you a bundle it will get you the cpu the ram and the board and that's what it's going to give you i think that's 32 gigabytes of ram they're giving you there all for that sort of price but again you're still going to need to get that cooler so you're probably looking at say another 40 dollars on top of that for the cooler which brings it up to over 200 bucks the problem is that when you're buying at that sort of price point you're starting to get towards a brand new Ryzen system of say a Ryzen 3600 or even a Ryzen 1700 or a 1600 AF and the trouble is these Xeon processors won't be able to outperform the Ryzen systems they just can't so again you won't be able to overclock this system here as well it does have features like M.2 slot on there but again this is an unbranded board if you went with modern day architecture you're going to get warranty you're going to get a decent modern day motherboard compared to something that's unbranded so it's entirely up to you which road you go down if you go down the used market aliexpress do offer used ryzen processors first gen ryzen processors like the ryzen 7 1700 which is a quite a good processor do think that price is a little bit strong uh, for me, I wouldn't be paying $134 or for $133.99 for, uh, you know, for a, a processor of that caliber, especially when you can get uh, the 3600 series, which is probably uh, not far behind or if not beat it. So you can see here you can get them used as well on places like eBay. So what do I recommend you do? Well, I recommend you go for something like this, where you can get yourself 16 gigabytes of DDR3, say 3200 or 3600 speed RAM, and that will be XMP memory. And it's only, uh, say, £77.99. If you live in the States, you're probably going to get that a lot cheaper in the States. And I will we'll do a price comparison in a second, which should show you what you can expect to pay again you can pick up a motherboard for say b450 and this is the msi b450 uh, tom hawk max if you want to go a bit cheaper you can buy the cheaper brand motherboards and they should work still fine and again it's not gonna uh, cause any problems with that cpu when you buy it now i would sort of say go for something like the 3600 which means you're going to have a great upgrade path a good return of investment as well because it's a modern day architecture the return of investment if you went with say that Xeon is going to be pretty much dead as soon as you buy it it's not going to be worth anything as soon as you buy it what are you going to sell it for I mean that's the problem it's all server grade hardware that's the thing so you got a Ryzen 5 3600 here and this will outperform that Xeon processor the price is gone a bit high at the moment because of uh, the environment we're living in but uh, not so long ago that was a really cheap price and you could get it a bit cheaper but 155 pounds uh, for a modern day architecture is pretty decent 
So let's take a look here and uh, we'll take a look at the pricing. So when I did some research on Amazon.com, you could get yourself a Ryzen system with a 3600 for $309.97. That's your motherboard chip and RAM and cooler for $309.97. The Xeon, on the other hand, with that $60 uh, cooler, and which I showed you, it all comes to $256.99. So if you went with that bundle, you'd buy a cheaper cooler, you're probably getting it for around about $220 or something like that. So it's entirely up to you what you want to go for. But personally, my personal choice it would be to go for the Ryzen system it's got good upgradability. You can upgrade to a faster, better chip at a later date. Whereas with that Xeon processor uh, setup, that is pretty much it. No upgrade path there. And also, it's old. It's very old at the moment. If you're going for that very first generation chip on there, it's pretty old. And uh, you're going to probably enjoy it for a little while. But when you start seeing the performance difference between the two, which I'll show you in a second, you'll realize that it isn't really so much of a good choice against a Ryzen system. And again, I've just picked out some random stuff here. This is the Ryzen 5 3600X here, which is a little bit more expensive compared to the 3600, but this is the only benchmark I could find here with the E5 2689. Now look at the difference there. The total CPU score is 420 for the Ryzen compared to 245 for the Xeon. You can see the 4K frames per second is way more on the Ryzen setup and also the 2K as well and also 1080p gaming you get way more frames so you have to weigh up the pros and the cons I mean this is quarter 2013 Xeon against the second quarter 2019 Ryzen setup and you can see here the uh, future proofing for the Ryzen is there whereas it isn't there for the Xeon which I've already mentioned and remember, you can overclock the Ryzen system as well, which will make it even more of a beast of a performer compared to the Xeon setup. So here you have your specs here as well uh, for the uh, Ryzen setup. You can see we've got uh, six cores and 12 logical cores, and we've got eight cores and 16 logical cores for the Xeon. 2.6 against 3.8, and then it your boost clock here your turbo clock is 3.6 gigahertz compared to 4.4 gigahertz the TDP is at 115 watts for the Xeon and 95 watts for the Ryzen so we know that the Xeon processor does gain pretty much most CPUs nowadays with a few cores will gain perfectly fine but you will run into a few issues like micro stutters and uh, the odd freeze here and there because of the older architecture with some modern games and also you can see there's a massive difference in performance on some games some of the games you can get away with with uh, like for like but most of them are going to get outperformed by the ryzen processor as you can see here so just bear that in mind when you're putting all your money into a project yes there is youtubers out there that promote them and say they're awesome for gaming they do play games but if you're getting them cheap of course it's awesome but when you're paying the sort of money that's close to a Ryzen setup, it's probably not worth going down that route. Now you can see here, this is a 2690 version two, and they want $182.50 for that. So once you start going up in the versions, it will start costing you more money. And the performance isn't vast amounts of difference. So it really comes down to what you want to do in money. So putting up the Ryzen 5 3600X against the uh, 2689 version 4, which does support, I think, DDR4 memory, you can see even then it still gets outperformed by that Ryzen 5 3600. So you can see there's quite a big score difference there. And this is with the latest version of Xeon uh, 2689 version 4, which I think supports DDR4. I'm pretty sure of it. I think it was a 2016 version of processor. So you can still, even then, it still gets beat. And that's a $2,723 processor in there. Now, when you buy in a bundle like this, and remember, you, that's quite an expense that you're laying out there. You still have to buy a cooler and everything else, just like you would with a Ryzen. 
uh, but when you put the cooler on there it's probably going to be around about 220 230 something like that and then you can put that all together so 230 you can put that money straight towards a Ryzen build if you wanted to and get something a bit more better and future proof now when it comes to selling this what are you going to get return of investment you're not going to get a lot because you are actually selling an old server grade cpu and you're going to have to be honest and tell that customer it's a server grade cpu server grade memory and of course it's an unbranded motherboard a chinese motherboard and how long is it going to last we really don't know so you're going to have to be a bit more open when it comes to selling it now of course if you've got a full-blown system which is a ryzen 5 3600 system and you put that up for sale that will sell like hotcakes it really would and also again it's all about how much it's cost you to build it how much are you saving by building an older system like that compared to a modern day system now the project still needs to be a viable project and it still needs to be worth doing so if you're looking for a gaming system and you're on a cheap budget then it has to be cheap if it's costing you literally so if you're saving hundred dollars then it's not worth it because it won't be worth the money the time you come to sell it or it won't last as long as a modern day brand new uh, Ryzen system so you have to use a bit of common sense really so what is it worth to you and what is it worth in the future it's probably not going to be as soon as you buy it it's not going to be worth anything when it comes to selling it because it is all server grade stuff you have to be honest so we all know at the end of the day they do play games but at reduced frame rates compared to a Ryzen setup and you have to sort of weigh up the pros and the cons whether it's worth doing or not for yourself. Only you can make that decision. Personally I would still go for the Ryzen setup because it's just not much difference in cost. Anyway with that said I hope this one answers your question and it helps you out. My name is Ben Bry from brightechcomputers.co.uk. Thanks again for watching guys. Bye for now. Now if you haven't subscribed yet hit the red subscribe button and then hit the bell notification button and click all to be notified when we upload new videos.